Hey friends, Kevin here, back talking about van life and my experiences and your experiences. And one of the things with being on any kind of social media or YouTube is that sometimes you get the occasional negative comment. I generally don't pay much attention to negative comments. I tend to just skip over them. But this one, well, I'll read it to you. Van life equals unproductive, depressing life that leads to psychological problems from being isolated, unproductive, and alone. Now, when I first was scrolling through the comments on a video and I saw that, I started laughing. And I, I found it quite amusing. And then I thought about it for a second and I thought, hey, maybe this guy's right. I don't know. So we're going to discuss this right now. The main problem I have with this gentleman's comment is that it pigeonholes everyone doing van life into one category. That I don't agree with. It's the same thing to me as someone being one of these things. So I'm going to call this vanist. You have an attitude where you're putting all van lifers together because I know this from all of the people I've met over the years. People get on the road and do this for a whole variety of different reasons. Have I met people like what he described? Absolutely, because we're all on a different path. We're all on our own journey through life. I can tell you what van life has done for me. It has allowed me to see things I never would have seen otherwise. It's allowed me to do things I never would have gotten to do otherwise. I have been in a bunch of national parks. I have been, I have seen it snow in the Grand Canyon. I have gotten to ride a bicycle over a bridge on the Mississippi River. I have gotten to ride it in Monument Rocks, Kansas. I have gotten to ride the bike off of Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Well, not off the tower. That would be a long fall. But I have gotten to be in South Dakota and on my bicycle come through a tunnel and be looking at one of the greatest sights you could ever see across the valley. I have gotten to meet amazing people all over the country. I have gotten to meet people who were here camping from other countries. I've gotten to hang out and camp with people from Germany and Australia. These are things I would not have been able to do had I been sitting at home. The van for me is just a vehicle to get me to these places and the potential to have these experiences. Are there people on the road with psychological problems doing van life? Absolutely but I don't think van life causes those problems. A lot of people get into this to get away from depression. Maybe they've reached the point that they need to just live their own lives. I know a lot of people are on the road after having some type of tragedy or major loss in their life, maybe of a loved one. And this is their way of going out and dealing with that grief. And if that works for them, wonderful because I think that that is a better solution than someone sitting home. That's where they're going to be often alone and isolated day after day, trying to deal with grief from some type of tragedy. Are there homeless people on the road that are in a van or some type of vehicle? Sure there are. The first time I was in New York City, I saw a television commercial that there were about 35,000 people at any given time, homeless people, in New York City. I looked this number up a couple of years ago, and that number had gone from 35,000 to 75,000. Those people don't have vans, so vans don't cause this issue either. As far as depression, I can tell you I probably have had some depression problems over the years. And I can tell you that my depression problems disappear when I'm on the road. I'm more likely to have a depressed issue when I'm here at home base than I am when I'm out exploring and adventuring and enjoying myself. 
the one word that kind of got me in, in that sentence of his, and he actually used it twice, is the word unproductive. Again, everybody has to travel in a way that works for them. For me, it's about adventuring, being out and exploring places and learning the history of where I am. I don't feel that makes me unproductive. There were many years I worked two and sometimes three jobs in my life to get in a position of being able to do this a little bit. So I don't think I was unproductive then. The first four years I was doing this, I was calling back in and overseeing e-commerce fulfillment. So even though I was on the road, I was working some every day. I would have to go in places, log in, deal with problems, make sure things got were done on time, make sure orders went out on time, a lot of things like that. So I wasn't unproductive on the road. What kept me from going on the road, in all honesty, to start with, was thinking I was so self-important that this business thing couldn't actually function without me. And there are a lot of people on the road who work in different ways. There are people that get temporary jobs where, where they happen to be. There are people who do DoorDash and delivery services while they're out on the road. There are people who have occupations where they can do what I was doing in those early years, which is sitting somewhere and working with a nice breeze and a nice view and handling a problem that was maybe a thousand miles away and still making some money. So again, that's that, that comment is that pigeonhole, let's shove everybody in this same box. And I would imagine that anybody that made a comment like that, either they went out and did it and they did it as it being van life, they did it completely wrong in which case, of course, they need to be watching this channel and be a subscriber to this channel so they can learn how to do things right, do things a bit easier, and hit off a lot of problems that people run into on the road before they happen. Or that comment was made by someone who has never actually done van life. And, you know, maybe they live in a city and they see they have to drive by a street where there's 50 basically homeless people in a van that are stumbling around all day and, and peeing on the sidewalk. I don't, I don't know. That's a possibility. But I can tell you for most of us out there, it is simply not that way. If that's what van life was, I wouldn't have any interest in doing it. So van life for me is a choice. RVs are great. Big RVs are great. And they're homey and they're nice. You know, I know people who have these giant RVs. The thing is, you can't take an RV where I want to go. That's why I do vans. I can take the vans, the big van virtually anywhere, and a small van like a minivan, I can take anywhere that I want to go. Whether I'm exploring in towns or whether I'm exploring out in nature. And of course, it would be nice to have the nicest, shiniest, newest vehicle. I used to be that way with in the past, but not doing van life because the big van, I've knocked a mirror off of it and put scratches on it. And during a windstorm, had shopping carts thrown into the side of it. The small van, I've ripped a mirror off it when I was out exploring before. So... That's why I like older vehicles. They're cheap to maintain when I do something silly. And when I head down some road that I've never been on before, I don't have a lot of worries of something going wrong. Now, if I was driving a 2023 model van, I would be terrified of putting the first scratch on it. And that would keep me from going to a lot of the places that I go to and explore. The same thing if I had an expensive RV. So travel is different for everyone. Van life is different for everyone. And the only thing that matters is that you figure out a way to do it that works for you, that brings you happiness and enjoyment. Watch this video up here next. If you're new here, you may want to check out this playlist full of videos. This is all stuff about van life, getting started in van life, what to expect in van life, 
how people are going to react to you sometimes in van life. And we'll talk soon.